Thank you. 
Good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd today. We're glad to have you with us as we continue our series about this hard truth that we find in the Bible. So we're looking through these different sayings of Jesus or our different topics that come up that makes us kind of scratch our head and say, is that, is that really what the Bible says? Today we face the hard truth that the door to heaven is, is narrow and that um, the, the first who we think would be the first into heaven are the last, and the, and the last person we'd think to get into heaven is going to be the first. And, and that's hard for us to kind of uh, rationalize in our own minds. And so let us sit back today, listen to what God's Word has to say, and, and teach us about these hard truths of Scripture. We have a, a beautiful service planned for you. We begin on page four of your worship folder, or it's up on your screen with our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. May God bless our worship. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, 
who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 66. As for me, because of their work and their thoughts, the time is coming for me to gather people from all nations and all languages. They will welcome and they will see my glory. They will come and they will see my glory. Then I will set up a sign among them. And I will send out survivors from among them to the nations, to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, to those who are archers, to Tubal and Javan, to the distant coastlands who have not heard my message and have not seen my glory. Then they will declare my glory among the nations. Then they will bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. They will bring them on horses and chariots and wagons and mules and dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord. In the same way that the people of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel to the Lord's house. Even from among these people, I will take priests and Levites, says the Lord. For just as the new heavens and the new earth 
that I am making will remain standing before me, declares the Lord. In the same way, your offspring and your name will stand. As often as one new moon follows another and one Sabbath follows another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says the Lord. They will go out and they will see the corpses of the ones who are rebelling against me, for their worm will not die and their fire will not be quenched, and all flesh will be horrified by them. The word of the Lord. We continue with the psalm of the day. Our second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and to burning fire, to darkness, to gloom, to a raging storm, to the sound of a trumpet and to a voice that spoke. Those who heard the voice asked that not one more would be added because they could not endure what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that even Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Instead, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to tens of thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven, to God, who is the judge of all, to the spirits of righteous people who have been made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of a New Testament, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better message than the blood of Abel. The word of the Lord. Please stand in honor of the gospel. Thank you. 
The Gospel according to Luke chapter 13. This lesson will serve as a basis of our sermon. He went on his way from one town and village to another, teaching and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Lord, are only a few going to be saved? He said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. Once the master of the house gets up and shuts the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock on the door, saying, Lord, open for us. He will tell you in reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. And he will say, I don't know where you come from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown outside. People will come from east and west, from north and south, and will recline at the table of the kingdom of God. And note this, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, may be seated, and we sing the hymn of the day. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Maybe you noticed in our, our lesson from the gospel that there wasn't really uh, an introduction to it. It just kind of jumped right in. And so that's what we'll do today. We'll just jump right into that main question. Are only a few going to be saved? Now, that's a, that's a tough question. And a tough question usually gets a tough answer, and it's full of a hard truth. Because our sinful flesh cries out with that question, what the answer is, depending on how we live. That's what it wants to say. It wants to say, either you're asking this question because you want to know if you're one of the few who are going to be saved, or you're asking a question because you're afraid that you're in the other camp who isn't going to be saved. And this question, though thousands of years old, it really doesn't get old. The question is asked today, nonetheless, in different ways. Maybe you've asked it yourself. Maybe you've heard other people ask it. Is God, who's supposed to be a God of love, really going to send people to hell? Is Christian, are Christians really going to say that their belief in God is the only way to heaven and there's, there's no other path of salvation? Are you going to tell me that just because you were lucky enough to grow up in the faith, that all those who, who haven't heard it, that they're really going to perish forever? These, these are tough questions. And these tough questions lead to some hard truth that Jesus must tell us. But if the answer behind those questions is, is yes, that only a few are going to be saved, that only Christianity is the one true religion, that God is a loving God, but there will be people sent to hell. If, if the answer is yes, then our sinful flesh wants to cry out and say, that's unfair. That, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem like it's true that it should be that way. But on the other hand, the, the other ditch, if the answer is, is no, well, then the sinful flesh still cries out and says, good, I don't have to worry about anything then. If everyone's just going to go to heaven, then, then why even try and do anything for my God in this life? And so what Jesus does in our lesson is, is the difficult thing of giving the answer that only he could give. Notice he doesn't necessarily answer the man's question. He doesn't say yes and he doesn't say no, but he gives that, that perfect answer that stays right in the middle and says, don't worry about everybody else. Don't worry about this or, or that and how many in this number. Instead, strive to enter through the narrow door. And that's a hard truth. The way to heaven is narrow. It's narrow. It's not, it's not like this big, huge, gaping gate that herds and herds of people are going through. There's only one way to get through, and that's Jesus. And so what we see today in this hard truth is that the narrow door is the only way to heaven, but this narrow door is indeed wide open. Our sinful flesh hears these words and it likes to, to cry out in agony saying that this isn't fair. And maybe that's why this question first came about in the, in the first place. It seems as if this questioner had finally caught on to what Jesus was telling them. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. He was stopping in many towns and villages along the way, preaching and teaching. And, and somehow this questioner finally had a click in his mind about what Jesus was trying to tell them. Maybe it was when somebody said they'd follow Jesus and he, and he said, but first let me go back and, and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus said, well, then you're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe it was when uh, he told a, a rich man to sell everything that he had and, and then he would be fit for the kingdom of God. 
Maybe it was, was one of these hard situations that, that Jesus was in when he told them that he was the bread of life. And the only way to get to heaven is through him because he is the true bread that remains. Whatever the situation might have been, what, however this came about, this questioner finally catches on. And so he asks this difficult question, are only a few going to be saved? Now that pesky, sinful flesh that we have that wants to rear its ugly head and say, this is how we're going to be saved save ourselves. It's accompanied by the sinful world and Satan himself. And it tries to tell us that in order to be one of the few that are going to be saved, is is what we're thinking, that we must do something to earn salvation. That we have to try harder, that we have to be more, that we have to do better uh, at life in order to get there. Or We look at the sinful world around us, and we like to compare ourselves to them. I'm a decently upstanding citizen. I don't have any warrants out for my arrest. I haven't haven't run anybody over with my car. I'm uh, I'm, I'm here today in church after all. I'm I'm a pretty good person, unlike those other people in the world who do all of these detestable things. And so we like to compare ourselves to the sinful world and think that if anybody should get into heaven, Well, it should be me, at least before them. And then there's Satan the whole time playing the the master puppet of all of these different evils in the world, trying to jockey for for his position to, to rip us away, to come in sneakily, to come in, yes, like a roaring lion, but usually that lion haunches down stocks, waits, and looks for that opportunity to strike when you least expect it or when you are at your most vulnerable and tries to to rip you away. And one of the tactics that he uses is, is one we see in this world today that many people don't want to hear anything about a door to heaven. They don't want to hear about heaven at all. They think that all of this might just be something that you you chalk up into the category of of wishful thinking, of puppies and rainbows, and and you just tell yourself those things to make you feel better. But that's a tremendous lie of the devil. And so Jesus, knowing all these different angles that our sinful flesh might take or the world might take or or that the the devil tries to to get us to see some other way to heaven or, or that there isn't a heaven at all, Jesus knows all of those things. And so he gives the perfect answer. Strive to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Does that confuse you? Because what Jesus says at first sight and first hearing doesn't sound very Lutheran, does it? Strive to enter through the narrow door. Many will try, they won't be able to. So doesn't our sinful flesh make it sound like it, it's work righteousness, that we have to do something to be saved? Doesn't that sound like what Jesus is saying? Strive, struggle, make every effort to do these things because it's going to be really hard to get to heaven. I assure you, Jesus is not advocating for any work righteousness. I assure you, Jesus is not telling you that you must do more and be better and try harder in order to get to heaven. But what he is telling us is that there is only one way to get to heaven. And it is through a narrow door. And that narrow door is Jesus himself. Jesus tells us in other places about how he is the the gate, how he's the good shepherd, how no one enters except through him. He tells us in other places of scripture that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him. And this is just another one of those instances where Jesus is teaching us that the only way for you and me in the world to find eternal salvation is through Jesus. 
It's that simple. It is a narrow door. It is completely exclusive to all of the other ways that people think they can get to heaven. But at the same time, it's completely inclusive because Jesus comes and pays the price for all people. He makes it so that you and me and, and your neighbor down the street who, who annoys you because they always cut their grass the, the, every single week and you're left behind or, or your coworker at work who is, who's always getting on your nerve, Jesus paid for every single one of their sins and yours and mine. He says the way is narrow, but that narrow way is wide open. And so why does he say to struggle or strive in the first place? Why, if it really is that simple, if it is that easy, if Jesus is saying, I am the way to heaven, and all you have to do is sit back and let the Holy Spirit work faith into your heart to believe in me and you get to go to heaven, why does he say it's a struggle at all? Because of those three deadly things we talked about before. Our sinful flesh, the sinful world around us, and Satan himself all seek to think that there's a different way, an alternative path to heaven, and we fall into one of those two ditches from the beginning. Either we're thinking that we can save ourselves, or we think that there's, there's no way that we have to even worry about believing in Jesus, and we don't have to struggle in any way. But that struggle that we have isn't so that we get to heaven. That striving, that making every effort isn't so that we do what's necessary for salvation. But it's to continue to set us up in environments and places like this in worship or at home where we have Bible studies to continue to be in God's word. So that when Satan throws those darts against you and tries to pull you away, you have something wonderful to fall back on. When life gets tough, when you're diagnosed with an unfavorable diagnosis, when a, a loved one is taken from you, when you lose your job, when, uh, when your, your career that you, you've worked so hard for isn't going the way that you want, um, when all of these things come into our lives, Satan tries to use those things to pull us away to get us to, to look to our good and gracious God and say, and have us say, where were you, God, when I lost so-and-so? You promised to always be with me, but I feel very lonely right now. Or all of these different things that is put into our head by, by Satan or our sinful flesh. But at the same time, while Satan is using those to pull us away, God is using those very same situations to bring us closer to God. And so will there be struggles? Will there be difficulties? Will this world be hard as we seek to follow Jesus and whatever path that leads and whatever, whatever way that comes about? Yes, it will be hard. It will be difficult. But know that that way to salvation never changes. That way to heaven is always the same. Always through Jesus, our Savior. Who at the beginning of our lesson said he was on his way to Jerusalem. You know what he's going to do in Jerusalem? He was going there to complete his mission. He was going there to suffer, to die so that this narrow door could be completely wide open for all who believe in Jesus. He goes there to pay for every last one of our sins. So that question, it doesn't have to be so tough after all. And that hard truth doesn't have to be a bitter pill to swallow. Because when we have Jesus in our lives, we don't answer the question yes or no, but we answer it with Jesus. The answer 
is Jesus. Are only a few going to be saved? Don't, don't worry about everything else. Just know about your Savior. Is a loving God really going to send some people to hell? Don't, don't worry about that. Tell people about their Savior. Struggle to make that relationship with somebody so they too can know about this narrow door, this one way to heaven, and show them that it's completely burst open for all people. Maybe it's come in your life along the way where something clicked for you. Maybe in a Bible study, maybe in a personal devotion, maybe here at church where, where you kind of ask this question as a questioner, are only a few going to be saved? And maybe it finally dawned on you what Jesus is trying to teach us. That he's the way to salvation. That he's the way through this narrow door. And that only thing that matters in this world is knowing Jesus as your Savior. So as we wrap up our, our thinking today, as we wrap up our, our sermon, Jesus ends with some, some other hard truths for us. Some who are last will be first, and some who are first will be last. We like to look out into this world and, and think that, that so-and-so should be going to heaven because of how they live and how they act and all these things. But Jesus flips that all around and says, that's not the way that the kingdom of God works. It says those who you think would be first are going to be last. And those who you think would never be believers, never would go to heaven, those ones are going to be first. But know this. First, last, middle, every single one of them is getting there the same way. Through that narrow door, through Jesus as our Savior. That's their only way to heaven. And thankfully, that way is wide open for all people. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, may it guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was in of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we continue with the prayer of the church. We have two special intercessions today. First for uh, Debra and Eddie Burns, who are celebrating their marriage yesterday. Um, we, we thank God that they are, are together, that God brings them together, and we can celebrate with them. Um, we also are um, come before our God in thanksgiving 
to celebrate the, the 50th anniversary of Steve and Nancy Brainerd. Um, what a wonderful thing that is, uh, that God brings us together and, and keeps us together for so long. So we pray. Dear Lord, we come before you today knowing that you are the giver of life, that you give us all things that we have, that you maintain us throughout the years and ages. What a wonderful blessing it is to know that in our inmost being, you are a good and gracious God who brought us into this world to provide and protect and preserve us until the day when you will come again. What a beautiful thing it is, dear Lord, that not only do you give us the things that we need in this life for our physical well-being, but you also give us the things in this life for our spiritual well-being. You sent your Son to be our Savior. You send the Holy Spirit to us to work faith into our hearts so that we believe in your Son as our Savior. And as you do your wonderful work of, uh, of converting us and having us cross over from death to life, help us to never take that wonderful grace that you've shown us for granted. Help us instead to let it fill us up and let it motivate us to tell others about this wonderful gift you've given us. We know that the path to heaven is narrow. We know the only way to salvation is through Jesus. And so help us to be bold and confident to proclaim our Savior to whomever and wherever we go. These are wonderful blessings, dear Lord, that you have given us. And we come before you for some other to recognize other wonderful blessings that you have given us as well. We thank you for bringing together Debra and, and Eddie in marriage. What a wonderful thing that is when you unite two people and bring them together. We pray that you will be uh, together with them a, a cord of three strands that is not easily broken, that they continue to love each other as you have loved them, and, and they continue to work together as husband and wife with you right at the center. Dear Lord, you, you are at the center of these things. And so we also come in Thanksgiving before you for Steve and Nancy to thank you for the many years that you have been with them, how you brought them together nearly 50 years ago now, and soon they will be celebrating that wonderful anniversary with one another. We pray that you would continue to bless them to keep them, to cherish them, and hold them for many more years to come. You truly are a good and gracious God who gives us all things good. And so for all of these requests and, and everything else we've, we've prayed in this prayer, we, we ask that it be done according to your will. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we will collect the offering. Please use this opportunity to fill out your connection cards and place them into the plate. If you do not have time right now to fill it out, you can hand it to an usher or a pastor after the service. Thank you.
Please stand as we continue with the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, a mighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, Lord God, eternal King and gracious Father. In love, you made us the crown of your creation. In mercy, you planned our salvation. In grace, you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, that he willingly placed himself under the law to redeem those under the law, that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your son's body and blood in this sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father, and to your Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. <clears throat> Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand for closing prayer. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O oh God, the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for a closing hymn. Good morning again, everyone. We just have a few announcements before we can get on with our day. Um, of course, everybody is welcome to come downstairs and join us for fellowship and Bible study. Uh, fellowship's going to be a little bit different since the gym is unusable this morning. So we made with what we have downstairs, and you can first dibs on the couches. You get to the couches first, then we have tables and chairs. So I'll see who gets down there first for that. Um, we're going to have our, our continued Bible study on the book of Colossians. Um, so everybody is welcome to stay for that. 
Um, a few things coming up, though. Uh, Shepherd Kids is starting up again on September 11th. That's our Sunday school. So if you know of any kids who, who would love to learn a little bit more about Jesus and God's word, please invite them to that. Uh, not too many weeks away, and, and it sounds like we have a great crew leading us again this year. Um, Roll On for Life is September 10th. Uh, it was uh, incorrect in the bulletin if you want to write in there 10th instead of 11th, uh, starting at 9 a.m. Uh, you can read about that fundraiser right there. It's uh, for a live and running for suicide awareness and prevention. Um, grief support group is starting this week in North Liberty. Um, if you have any questions or you'd just like to, to see what it is for one Wednesday, um, we're going to be doing it for 13 weeks, seeing how many people we can help um, in, in the time of loss of a loved one. Um, sometimes that grief and sadness, just we can't get over, right? Um, we lost somebody who is deeply involved in our lives that we care about. Um, if you want to participate in any way or if you have any questions, there's handouts in the back or just come and talk with me. Uh, I'm leading this first sen session with uh, Tim Woodward. So if you'd like to do that, um, please, please let me know. Um, you can see the announcements for the Vinton Boom, uh, Boom Fest coming up. And um, one thing that I also would like to say that's in here, uh, that isn't in here, sorry, is the Called Workers Care Committee. Uh, we have a few who volunteered. We need like one or two more. Um, it doesn't take a lot. Um, meeting only a couple times a year, uh, checking in on the pastors and their wives. If you would like to be part of that, please uh, talk to Doug Woodward, and he'll let you know what it takes to be on that committee. All right? Any other announcements I am missing? All right. May God bless your day and your week.